All right, problem 28. Okay, so we got meteorologists that are interested in the relationship between minimum pressure and maximum wind speed of hurricanes. The minimum pressure in millibars and maximum wind speed in knots were collected for a random sample of 100 hurricanes from the year 1995 to the year 2012. A regression analysis of maximum wind speed on minimum pressure produced a 95% confidence interval of negative 1.42 to negative 1.2 for the slope of the least squared regression line. Which statement is the correct interpretation of the interval? Okay, so this one, like, honestly, it, this, these ones um, sometimes can even overwhelm me just with the terminology. So just... Um, Just remember that at the, when it comes to, to like regression analysis, it is really just a scatter plot, like an XY graph. It's always going to come down to that. So you don't really have to understand what minimum pressure millibars. You don't, you know, you don't have to have a background in physics. Or you don't have to be like a weather person. Um, you just got to basically decide which one is X and which one is Y. And the way it's worded. This is maximum wind speed on minimum pressure. So basically, um, you're going to decide the vertical axis, y, and, or the, let's, again, let's put it like the exponentiary. If you remember the exponentiary for x, maybe the, and the response for y, it, it probably is how you would learn it initially when you learn about this stuff. And um, you have, you know, change in, in the, in, it's, remember it's slope, change in um, X under change in Y, just like a, in, um, like algebra. Now, what this is saying is you're taking, you're finding an analysis for the relationship of, you know, of a scatter plot, or in other, it says a slope. So since the slope is negative in here, so you basically have, a line that trends downward, something like that. So you want to just basically see what does this make, which of these makes sense. Um, best, I mean, if you, again, if you have no idea what this is like, talking about your or your loss from the from the get go, just make a scatter plot. Like you have a slope of a line that's negative, it's gonna be like that, and kind of work out the rest. Um, don't you don't really have to worry about the ninety five percent. And all that, all those tech, no calculations, in other words, like it's really just about interpreting this correctly. Okay, so um, so the and then anyways, uh, the maximum win. The max win is going to be the y or the response, and then the minimum pressure will be the x. And again, I don't, I, I'm, I can't really say I have like a trick for how you figure this out. And again, it doesn't really actually matter because um, usually it's not going to, that's not going to be an issue in that. Um, again, you just want to, the key thing you're looking for is that as, as minimum pressure increases, max wind decreases. They're, they have a, they have a you know, reverse or inverse relationship. So remember 95% confidence interval, it's not necessarily a probability where it's basically saying we're 95% confident. So right away we know if we see D or E and we just want to see what's going on here. Wind speed increases, wind speed decreases. Um, so it's really going to come down to um, C and D. But as wind speed decreases, on average between for each increase in minimum pressure, because as X goes up, This is, this is your delta X, Y goes down, your delta Y goes down. Because this is negative and the answer would be C. All right, 29. Right, some contact lens wears report problems with dryness in their eyes. A study was con conducted to evaluate the effectiveness of a new eye drop solution with, to relieve dryness for contacts contact lens wearers. 25 volunteers who wore contact lenses agreed to use the new solution for one month. At the end of the month, 36% of the volunteers reported that the new solution was effective in relieving dryness. The company that produced a new eye drop solution concluded that using the new solution is more effective in relieving dryness than using no solution. 
which is following best explains why the study does not support such a conclusion. Okay, remember um, when you have an experiment, you always have to have um, a baseline. You can say a baseline group, or you know, a, a group that doesn't that doesn't receive any treatment. In other words, you want to have a control group. That's kind of that's essential for any for the you know for a good experiment, and you see that they just had 25 volunteers right away, and they all agreed for the new solution. There really wasn't, a, there were, so for this to be done well, you'd have 25 volunteers, and then you'd break them into, into two groups, where may, you know, one would think they're receiving a solution, and one would not be receive, receiving a solution. Then you would have a control group. But the problem here is you don't have a control group. So the answer is B. All right, 30, the management team of a company with about 10,000 employees is considering installing charging stations for electric cars in the company parking lots. In a random sample of 500 employees, 15 reported owning an electric car, which of the following is a 99% confidence interval for the proportion of all employees at the company who own an electric car. Okay, so this is really just knowing um, the format of a confidence interval. So this will be P hat plus or minus your Z star, critical value times the standard deviation, which is p hat times one minus p hat over n. And again, this is given in your, in your formula packet. You don't have to have this memorized. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for hundreds of years, so then I pretty much have it down. We just got to figure out what all these are. So the sample proportion is five, is no, the n is 500. 15 out of 500 is going to be your p hat. So you have 15 out of 500. And I think that's 3%, yeah, 0 0.03. So your P hat is 0 0.03. So you're gonna have 0 0.03 plus or minus 99% confidence interval. Well, first let me just put the 0 0.03 in here. One minus 0 0.03 would be 0 0.97 over 500. Your Z star, remember that's your, standardized as your z-score where there's 99% in the middle. So you want to find that value. You can use your table or you can use your calculator. For this, you can go to distribution and then go to inverse norm. In this calculator, you're going to enter the area to the left. So since 99% is in the middle, that means there's half a percent here. So 99.5% to the left. And now I'll give you the Z star value here. So this will be about the 2.58. That'll go there and that's, that's it. So then we just look to see which one matches. And then we can see that it'll be C. All right, 31. A test of the hypothesis HO is, is that mu is zero versus the alternative that mu is more than zero. It was, it was conducted using a sample size of size seven, or using a sample of size seven. The test of this goes T is 1.935, so which of the following is closest to the p-value of the test? Okay, so this is really just making sure that you, um, a T, remember a, t, a test statistic T is still, um, the same concept as a z-score, we just have technically a t-distribution. So your t-distribution, 1.935. So since we say greater than mu, we're looking at one-sided, the, the area to the right. We want to find this value. What is this area? So then you have to look at the distribution of a of you know of a t of a t um you have to look at the yeah the distribution of a t distribution with degrees of freedom equal to n minus one so since n is um seven the degrees of freedom is six so you can also again do this in your calculator which i recommend go with distribution 
go to TCDF, enter the T, enter the, the critical or enter the, the test statistic T 1.935 first. Then you go to the upper bound, like, you know, area to the right or values to the right, sit very big, comma, then the degrees of freedom. So that'll give you about 0 0.05, which will be D. So again, the syntax here is, is you know, the lower upper bound and then degrees of freedom. But if you have, a, if you have, um, and that's for the TCDF function, if you have a more, if you have a newer calculator, it'll be very straightforward. It'll literally have like rows for you to enter these specific values. So you won't have to memorize anything. There you go. I hope that helps. Good luck.